These cars are still quite young, but already now we can say that Astra J turned out to be very ambiguous. It has both obvious advantages and no less obvious disadvantages. And for a complete understanding, you will have to very carefully understand not only which motors and transmissions were installed on it, but even where they were assembled. But talking about how difficult it is to buy a successful Astra J, and how expensive it is to maintain, we will traditionally start with the body, interior and chassis. And then we'll talk about engines and gearboxes. The departure of all budget GM models from the Russian market interrupted the very good start of the Astra J. Despite internal competition with the very successful Chevrolet Cruze and the predecessor Astra H, which continued to be produced, the car, as they say, went. The combination of modern appearance, excellent driving performance, modern turbo engines and a very high quality interior attracted both fans of the brand and people who had previously avoided Opel. The undoubted advantages of the model include a wide model range of sufficiently powerful atmospheric motors. Some people pecked at the appearance of new six-speed automatic transmissions and excellent fuel efficiency ratings. In general, it was definitely a breakthrough in the world where the VW concern was firmly entrenched with its cars of this class. Opel made a relatively cheap, comfortable, and advanced car. In this generation of Astors, configurations with downsize 1.4-liter turbo engines and automatic transmissions received a clear advantage. This time, the brand's conservatism gave way to the latest trends. All these factors, as well as traditionally adequate prices for new cars, a wide selection of bodies and the fame of inexpensive cars to operate, allowed Astra J to keep the company's cash register even after the market was attacked by B++-class sedans. But after 2014, sales ceased, and the next generation of the Astra K model was not officially presented to us. In the world, a happy future for the model was practically guaranteed. An almost exact copy of the European Astra was sold in the USA as the Buick Verano, and there it was with a naturally aspirated 2.4-liter engine, 182 horsepower, and a turbocharged 2-liter engine with 253 horsepower. And in China, the Buick Excel XT-GT showed excellent sales with more familiar European atmospheric engines of 1.6 and 1.8 liters and a supercharged 1.6. There he repeatedly won first place in sales among foreign manufacturers. The total circulation of the model over the years of production is more difficult to calculate, but together with the Chevrolet Cruze platform, it is estimated at millions of cars. So, given all the clones and relatives, this model is one of the most common cars in its class. At least this fact suggests that it was well received not only by us. And knowledgeable people will be told that for Astra J there should be a rich selection of spare parts from various suppliers in different markets and an extensive market for used components around the world. Like most relatively young cars, you cannot be afraid of serious natural corrosion. Relatively rare cases of peeling of the paintwork are typical for the first installation batches of cars assembled in St. Petersburg and very early cars. For some reason, the problem mostly affected three-door hatchbacks. Sometimes a defect happens on later cars and other bodies, but you should not look for some kind of system in this. It is rather a marriage that was eliminated precisely as a marriage. It was lucky that the body was well galvanized and easily endured a couple of months in a bare state. As a standard, paint peels off on the front fenders and in the front part of the threshold due to sandblasting, and this happens with a run of less than 100,000 kilometers. In general, paint on galvanized panels holds worse than on ordinary steel sheets and a similar defect can be found even on very well-painted cars, like the Audi A6 and the C5, C6 body, which are difficult to suspect of cheapness and poor assembly. Be that as it may, checking the paintwork for thickness and repainting, as well as body seams for originality, is highly recommended, because the paint layer as a whole is quite thin and is easily damaged by contacts. And touch-ups mask more serious accidents. Features of the geography of the production of the car at one time provided her with a rich selection of Chinese body elements. Now the situation with the availability of body parts has changed to the opposite, the original is greatly lacking. Sometimes it's easier to order imported parts from Buick than from Opel. There are almost no non-original spare parts, and you cannot count on cheap body repairs. Used components are still quite expensive, and damaged items will need to be refurbished whenever possible. Please note that the anti-corrosion protection of the bottom is poorly made, the surface is only partially covered with impact-resistant mastic, and therefore paintwork defects are found there. 
including with already quite extensive underfilm corrosion and even in places with loose rust. And if on flat surfaces below they are easily removable, then on the rear arches or at the bottom of the doors it will be noticeably more expensive to remove it. Unfortunately, there are already cars with the initial stage of such a disaster. So it is recommended to carry out anti-corrosion protection measures and not to forget about prevention in the future. Even the best bodywork does not guarantee the absence of corrosion problems after five or six years of operation. The rest of the body is almost perfect. The locks are strong, even on the back door function perfectly. Doors even on three-door GTC do not require adjustment. The seals work perfectly. By the way, about optics. For Astra, front adaptive AFL optics was offered and it is an order of magnitude better than regular standard headlights. But it was also marked by both the high price of the headlight itself, and the wear of the lens drives themselves and the failure of control systems. The main consumables are body level position sensors, but the lens motors also get tired over time, often freezing in extreme positions. Repair, of course, is not provided, but the headlight can be disassembled. Craftsmen will be able to sort it out, there is nothing super complicated in it. But there are problems with spare parts. There have been cases of failure of the fuel tank hatch drive. The Pilkington windshield is frankly unsuccessful, it cracks easily and rubs over quickly enough. Especially if you rarely change the brushes and stay without a washer. And it also cracks from temperature changes, sometimes it doesn't even require airflow from the stove, a bright sun is enough. Replacing or checking the brushes here requires transferring them to the service mode. After turning off the ignition, you need to move the lever down without removing the key, and the wipers will rise to the service vertical position. By the way, be careful with the trapezoid, it is not cheap and does not differ in strength. Salon will appreciate the excellent work of all systems, but there are also disadvantages to be found. The seats are somewhat weak, compared to premium brands, their wear will be more noticeable. By a run of 100,000, the combined seat trim is already beginning to give out the age of the car with a small cushion drawdown. But the serious wear of the seats and steering wheel speaks, rather, of a mileage of more than 200,000 kilometers, one up to a reasonable value. Buttons and decorative elements may be worn even earlier, plastic does not withstand rough handling. In general, the interior is also characterized by small crickets of the panel, overhead console and skins. They are random in nature, and in most cases were not fixed under warranty, GM service was not particularly friendly. The resource of the air conditioning fan is far beyond 200,000. The automatic climate control control unit itself is somewhat unsuccessfully implemented. If handled carelessly, the handles can fail. Power windows can only creak, and distortions and their other problems are rare. Versions with the heated steering wheel are characterized by an increased load on the snail of the steering wheel and have a slightly shorter coating life. This is quite normal. But in winter, this option significantly improves the perception of the car even if sometimes there are complaints about random failures of the seat heating system. On cars with manual transmission, the gear lever becomes very loose over time, usually this indicates a mileage of over 200,000, but sometimes the problem occurs much earlier. In general, everything is pretty predictable and boring. Brakes, suspension and steering. The braking system is far from perfect. Squeaky pads are not so bad, this is a traditional problem of GM cars but the souring of the fingers of the rear calipers is already an unpleasant thing. If the handbrake has the auto hold function, then the probability of failure of the drive after four to five years of operation is quite high. And if you do not use the handbrake at all, then its mechanisms turn sour. I draw your attention to the fact that on the GTC and when choosing the optional 17 inch wheels on the sedan and station wagon, a braking system was installed that would not allow you to put 15 and 16 inch wheels so only anything larger than 16 inches will do. At the same time, the brakes in such cases squeak more and more often than standard ones. True, and slow down much better. The suspension of the car as a whole is simple and has a good resource, but there are several nuances. The rear semi-independent suspension is equipped with a what mechanism for better handling. And in the case of operation in Moscow, it is prone to souring, as a result of which the traction can bend, and the car will become unnecessarily rigid. The beam itself keeps perfectly up to 150 to 200,000 mileage around the city, then inexpensive silent blocks usually do not withstand further. She does not like only overloads and dirt roads, and even more so, their combination in one trip. 
the front suspension is almost eternal, but there are also nuances. With frequent movement on unpaved and simply dirty roads and a rare washing of arches, the support bearing of the strut suffers. The rear arm support does not like shock loads on rails and tires larger than 18 inches. And if you have a GTC with a steering knuckle, then there are more vulnerabilities, and suspension elements are more expensive. Not happy with the resource of shock absorbers. After 50 to 60 thousand runs on most cars, their efficiency decreases markedly, but they rarely leak, and a complete failure usually occurs after a hundred or more thousand runs. But with the full load on rough roads and older cars, driving is frankly unpleasant. Adjustable flex ride, in addition to the same resource features, are characterized by increased sensitivity to shock and a very high price. And repairing the suspension of a simple Astra can be more expensive than repairing the pneumatics of some W220 from the beginning of the century. The steering is very good, especially on new motors with which an electric booster is installed. The main thing is not to drive through deep puddles, not to force forwards and not to neglect the prevention of contacts at least once every few years. Because the price of a new rail with a gearbox is 160,000 rubles. The drive itself is noticeably cheaper, about 15 to 30. There are rare cases of steering shaft bearing failure, but mostly on the very first cars. Eager on machines with atmospheric engines, unfortunately, as a not very successful electric pump. The officially non-replaceable fluid in the amplifier after 60 to 100,000 runs is an unpleasant black goo. No wonder pumps fail and racks leak. An oil change at least at 50,000 miles can significantly extend the life of this expensive unit, and when buying a used Astra J, it is worth checking the condition of the fluid. Astra J gearboxes were not very lucky. Moreover, there are no complaints about the rest of the transmission elements, everything goes long and hard. Fortunately, there is only front-wheel drive and there are no additional card and shafts and gearboxes. The traditional Opel trouble in the form of a manual transmission of the F-17 series is also present on the Astra J. A 5-speed box with naturally aspirated engines of 1.4 and 1.6 liters is exactly that. And the saddest thing is that with a 1.8 liter engine, it was also usually installed on its own. This is a frankly problematic unit with a weak differential and very often failing output shaft bearings have been stubbornly put on Opel cars for about 20 years. Moreover, even with 1.6 liter engines, it often failed, and even with 1.8 liters and on heavy cars like the Vector C, it became just a consumable. But the mass of Astra J is the same 1,500 kilograms, it is a very heavy car, despite its size and belonging to the Golf class. By the way, the same box is paired with 1.3 liter diesel engines, which are already quite problematic. In short, a car with such a manual transmission resembles a lottery. The chances are not so bad, most of the cars successfully drive for 10 years or more without experiencing any special problems, especially if they monitor the oil level in the manual transmission and occasionally change it, the box is prone to leaks. But those who like to pull trailers, those who are rude with the clutch, like to break the speed limit on the highway, drive over bumps without slowing down, and generally do not really care about the well-being of the transmission, the chances are much less. Used boxes are in great short supply, they are in great demand for older cars. When buy, it is recommended that you check the noise of the manual transmission on the lift, for which you need to spin the wheels with the engine and turn it off. If the bearings are already failing, a characteristic noise will be heard, and be sure to check the oil for metal dust. If you have any suspicions about the manual transmission, it is worth bargaining. A new box costs about 200000 which looks almost unrealistic for a car priced at 400 to 500,000 rubles. A used box in good condition will cost from 20,000, and repairs, from 10 to infinity. Spare parts are very expensive, and many put second-hand ones in the process of restoration. With turbocharged engines of 1.4 to 1.6 liters and almost all diesel engines, a stronger 6-speed M32WR was installed. Unfortunately, similar problems haunt her. True. The failure rate is generally lower than that of the F-17. The box feels especially good with 1.4 turbo engines or the first 1.6 turbo, which has a small torque. With 1.6 CD, especially with the 200 horsepower version of the GTC, everything is much more complicated. More than 280 newton meters of torque, the box holds much worse and is damaged more often. With a 1.7 liter diesel engine, the M32 is also quite vulnerable. Upon purchase, 
the same verification is required as for F17. The gearbox is a little better reparable, but in the same way, used units in good condition are in some short supply and are not cheap. However, earlier this box was put on cars with turbocharged 2-liter engines, and there it failed much faster. So the owners of Astra J are not so bad. Only owners of cars with 2.0-liter gasoline and diesel engines were very lucky. They rely on an adult box of the F40 series, for which 350 to 400 newton meters of these motors are children's toys. Unless a dual-mass flywheel will force owners to fork out for something other than a new clutch. If you think that here, like the Astra H, automatic transmission is more reliable than manual transmission, then I'm afraid that I will have to upset you. For this generation of cars, GM has become generous with a new machine of its own design. More precisely, joint with Ford. On Ford cars, these boxes performed well, but on GM they squeeze everything that can be squeezed out of them, especially in the boxes of the first releases. However, let's go in order. Atmospheric 1.6 liter engines are equipped with an automatic transmission GM 6T30 series. With 1.4 turbo engines, a box of the 6T40 series was installed, but 1.6 CD put an even stronger version of 6T45. These automatic transmissions of the modular series technically repeat each other, but the younger ones have a noticeably lightened mechanical part of the box. A characteristic feature of GM machines is the very aggressive operation of the valve body. If the driver likes to sink, he literally allows you to tear the box apart. And most of all, cars with the 6T30 box were unlucky, it is simply not suitable for this. The 6T40 with a 1.4 liter turbo engine gets along noticeably better and the 6T45 with 1.6 CD works just fine. It's nice, but sometimes with a 1.4 turbo engine you can also find 6T45, moreover, from the factory, and on cars with atmospheric engines, 6T40. But these are extremely rare options, you should not seriously expect to find such a car. Moreover, the problem of these automatic transmissions is connected not only with the power of the motors. First of all, we note that the box at the time of the release of Astra J was quite fresh and was constantly being improved throughout the entire period of its release. So there are many modifications and options for the execution of internal nodes. All gearbox options have a very intense thermal regime, which naturally leads to problems in the electrical part and accelerated wear of all friction clutches, including the main one, the gas turbine engine blocking lining. Well, how without obvious errors in the mechanical part? There is also a typical mechanical problem due to the design. When buying and during operation, it is recommended to check the oil in the automatic transmission for level and color. The level is often measured incorrectly, which can also lead to bad consequences. In short, the oil should just drip and not pour from the control hole. Many unsuccessful translations of the instruction manual miss this point. And, of course, the box really lacks cooling and an external filter. The regular heat exchanger in the radiator on a number of machines is supplemented by a small remote radiator under the number 52432861, but its area is also not enough for heavy load. And yet, with normal operation, the situation improves markedly with it. But in the mountains, or if you like to ride dynamically, you need a radiator twice as large in area. The main mechanical problem of 6T40-6T45 for early releases, until about 2011, is the breakdown of the 456 drum retaining ring. After the ring breaks, the drum is damaged almost irreversibly and needs to be replaced. The part itself is not too expensive, about 11 to 15,000 rubles, but there can be a lot of incidental damage. After this breakdown, the car usually gets up immediately. Subsequently, the drum was changed to a reinforced one, and the problem disappeared. Note that the new part 213550BBEM requires a new piston and a new caliber. However, this drum is long-suffering on all boxes of the family, including the 6T30, where a part of a slightly smaller diameter is used. The problem is still in the wavy spring used, a volumetric ring for pressing the package. It bursts under load, and this problem cannot be solved, you can only fix it in time and not load the box to the maximum at which the spring breaks most often. If you ignore the jerks that appear, then the drum 213550 is damaged, and the fragments can kill the sun gear of the planetary gear, and the entire planet number 213580 will go for a replacement. And this is already a big expense. If you stop by the service in time, 
then everything will be fine either by replacing the long-suffering 456 drum, or even installing a repair spacer on it and, of course, a new spring. Another feature of the box is the relatively intense wear of the sleeves due to the adopted hydraulic scheme. Pressure and load pulsations lead to their wear and tear, and therefore, even with the good mechanical and hydraulic part, the pressure in the box steadily drops. This completely natural process is usually noticeably accelerated in case of problems with contamination of the valve body and oil. Even with normal operation of the box, or a run of 250 to 300,000, the bushings must be replaced preventively. The bushings are changed if there are any problems with the operation of the box and oil pollution. The VFS solenoids used in this box are also very sensitive to contamination and oil temperature. The good news is that they are relatively inexpensive and can even be washed with a good chance of success. The bad news is that for most car owners who have not changed the oil, almost all of them will require replacement, as well as bushings. The pre-2011 black solenoids are less reliable and less tolerant of high temperatures, while the green slash yellow 213420K kit is a bit more reliable and often solves jerking problems for a while. But if the oil pressure is insufficient, the gas turbine lining has not been replaced, the bushings are old, and the sealing rings on the drums are worn out, then the repair will not last long. Another typical problem with these boxes that have worked under high load is the contamination of the hall sensors with magnetic wear products of the box. Moreover, the turbine speed sensor can be used as a mechanics wear sensor. The state of the unit can be seen on it by the amount of debris. Of the remaining problems, the most unpleasant is the abrasive wear of the channels of the valve body plate. There is a Sonax kit for repairs, but its correct installation requires extraordinary skill and therefore often does not help. As you understand, these boxes are not in vain considered problematic. There are few chances for a long and happy life. You can slightly improve the situation by changing the oil often, using an external filter for automatic transmissions, installing a good radiator and not overloading the unit. Unfortunately, most owners violate these requirements one way or another, and even modernized boxes after 2011 have a finite resource and very high chances for extraordinary repairs. Not everyone knows, but another box is aggregated with a 2-liter diesel engine. This is a noticeably more reliable Eisen TF81SC. Its undoubted advantages include a reliable mechanical part that can withstand 450 Newton meters nominally, and abnormally all 600. There are also disadvantages. The box has a valve body that is very sensitive to pollution and frankly capricious, in which the plate itself suffers greatly from wear, and very expensive spare parts. But due to the relatively rare use on the Opel Astra, it is better to read the detailed description in the article about the Volvo S60, where this automatic transmission is widely used. You cannot be afraid of overheating with the diesel engine on an Opel, and in this version, the automatic transmission is definitely the leader in reliability among all Astra J transmission options. It's a little boring to talk about Opel power units for the 20th time, I hope you have studied the relevant materials on Astra H and Zafira B. In fact, Atmospheric engines have not changed at all, and diesel engines are almost the same. Engines A14XER, A16XER, A18XER here are the same and with the same features. These are relatively reliable and simple motors, which, nevertheless, have a number of unpleasant weaknesses. Current heat exchangers, capricious phase regulator valves and current phase shifters, unsuccessful thermostats, a dirty intake manifold and exhaust cracks have not gone away. The chains on 1.4-liter engines and belts on January 6th and January 8th do not please with the resource either. But cars with these motors are not troublesome, these minor troubles are solved quite reliably and inexpensively. And during the warranty period, there are usually no problems at all, up to 100 or 1,500,000 mileage you don't have to worry too much. If you still use non-branded Dexos 2 oil, which is very prone to oil plague and in general does not differ in special quality, but something decent, then you can count on a quite decent resource of the piston group in the absence of an oil burner up to a run of 200, 300,000 kilometers. If the engine eats up oil, nothing bad will happen either. A complete loss of oil pressure or global breakdowns are unlikely. The design is not only conservative, but also has a good margin of safety. Of the additional problems on the Astra J, only a tight layout, flaws in the seals of the cooling system and its design in general, including two closely spaced radiators and a constantly flowing expansion tank, were added. 
If you want to see more criticism of these motors, see the materials about Aster H and Vector C. On older cars the number of problems is noticeably greater. On Aster J, these motors suffer only from heat exchanger leaks, and even in old age or after serious operational violations, cover leaks, oil appetite, and similar consequences. Much more interesting new turbo engines. I note right away that in terms of the mechanical part, A14 net, A14 NEL and A16 let almost completely repeat their ancestors of the same working volume in the face of A14 XER and A16 XER. Unless the chain resource on a 1.4 liter engine is still smaller than that of an atmospheric engine, and you need to monitor it more carefully. But this problem is not great either, usually for the first time everything is limited to replacing the chain itself and occasionally the tensioner. A complete set with stars and a phase shifter changes much less often, usually with runs over 200,000. A lower operating temperature, there is a 90 degree thermostat here, allows us to hope for a longer resource of plastic and rubber elements of the cooling system. True, for some reason, there are a lot of complaints about the pump and its housing just for the A14 net motor, often it is only enough for 60 to 80,000 mileage. It not only starts to make noise, but also loses its tightness. Sometimes there are also failures of the boost control system. Most often, the boost control valve fails, here they manage with the usual vacuum actuator, without any of your fashionable electronic actuators. The turbine resource is usually at least 150,000 kilometers. There is a simple KKK03 here, the cartridges for which are inexpensive and have long been mastered in repairs for Volkswagen cars. The most serious, but, fortunately, rare problem of such motors is burnout and piston breakage. They are possible when the intake temperature rises to 60 degrees and above, the use of low-quality fuel or piston coking. Therefore, the cleanliness of radiators and the condition of the piston must be monitored very carefully. But the 180 horsepower A16 LET is an example of a less successful conversion of a naturally aspirated engine to a turbocharged one. A clear lack of performance of the cooling system, more precisely, the circulation of fluid in the block, leads to an increased load on the fourth cylinder and, as a result, to an increased chance of piston burnout and damage to the block. The pistons themselves are rather weak, detonation often causes baffle breaks or even cracks. The crankshaft and lubrication system also work to the limit, and the SAE 30 oil for this engine is frankly thin, although there are cases of oil scraper rings due to oil drain problems on a more viscous one. In general, this motor will ask you to fill in high-quality synthetics, and not just anything. An ester is better and with minimal dropout of additives and very thorough maintenance. Regular oil does not suit him well, consider this. By the way, only high quality 95 gasoline is recommended, and preferably 98 to 100, and you need to monitor the temperature regime in both. When buying a car, be sure to check the condition of the piston group and do not be too lazy to do an endoscopy of the fourth cylinder. The initial stage of problems is marked there by small seizures of the piston and corresponding marks on the cylinder. And in the future, the chances of problems with the piston group remain quite high. High oil temperatures result in more frequent heat exchanger leaks. Taking into account the fact that not only a catalyst, but also a turbine stands above it, the repair price increases slightly. The motor itself, unfortunately, has a small margin for forcing. To achieve decent power and torque of more than 300 newton meters, it is necessary to change the oil pump and reinforce the cylinder block with a plate at the bottom. Yet the original design was designed for half the load, and ignoring these restrictions leads to sad consequences. Usually, the lubrication of a part of the crankshaft journals is violated due to curvature, and then where the curve will take it. The turbine here is the usual KKK03, as on a 1.4 liter engine. Installing KKK04 is not recommended due to the limitations described above, but in general, don't be scared. The motor is very inexpensive in design, well understood and known, and even though its 180 forces are in fact no more cheerful than 122 to 140 forces from a 1.4 engine from another manufacturer of downsized motors, a car with such an engine drives briskly. And with careful operation, it is quite possible to count on 200,000 trouble-free mileage. Here are the A16 XHT motors, they are also 1.6 CD, this is a completely different calico. Despite the lower power, there are only 170 forces in the initial version. The cylinder block, crankshaft, and power system are clearly designed for a noticeably greater load. In practice, 
This means that without much intervention in the hardware, you can get more than 300 newton meters of torque from it, and the standard version has a good margin of reliability. Even balance shafts are added, and the motor is completely devoid of vibrations. Direct injection gives it a reduced sensitivity to the octane number of the fuel. The engine runs at just 95 and does not find fault. And now a fly in the ointment. Poor piston material is very sensitive to detonation. Pistons crack, and it's good if you do without damaging the cylinder block. Detonation is still often managed to be obtained when fuel equipment breaks down, dirty radiators and an intercooler. The turbine really blows here and direct injection is very sensitive to fuel contamination and the quality and condition of filters and, as a result, to nozzle contamination. Moreover, a change in the shape of the injection jet can lead to increased wear of the cylinder and piston rings. The standard firmware of cars until 2013 is unsuccessful. It does not take into account possible malfunctions in the operation of fuel equipment and the fact that we have especially smart drivers pouring clean 90-second gasoline, and therefore, pistons fly with it regularly, so it is recommended to upgrade to the latest software version. The carbon formation on the pistons and valves of the motor is simply terrible. It requires regular bracing once every 30,000 kilometers. Well, or installing a water methanol injection system, which helps very well. The chain has a very small resource, often stretching to a mileage of 60,000 to such an extent that it begins to knock on the motor cover. It's good that at least it doesn't fly off. In general, the motor is still very raw, although it has potential. With forged pistons and good tuning, German companies do not hesitate to take up to 300 horsepower from it, but I'm afraid this fact will not help in any way for the guys from our yard, and in the standard version this engine remains a risky option with high potential. Astra J is a very good car, especially if you are lucky and you did not choose the initially problematic option. You know, here a step to the right, a step to the left, and now. Typically, this is only after a run of 100,500 kilometers, but the age of the car is already quite sufficient for such a run to be considered normal. In general, everything is fine, but atmospheric engines rely on very unsuccessful manual transmissions and hardly more reliable machines, which, although they were finalized after 2011, did not completely eliminate the shortcomings. Powerful supercharged 1.6-liter engines are generally a minefield. Of course, you can install an automatic transmission 6T40 with atmospheric 1.8, modify the supercharged 1.6 by installing a new forged piston. But for this reason, the model does not have as many fans as it could be. Choose a car wisely, check for weaknesses, and it will please you with the low cost of operation.